Welcome folks to The Hungry Gamers back with another playthrough and today we're doing a playthrough of Mission Catastrophe designed by Matt Walters and published by Cardboard Alchemy. And before I jump in here, let me just say that I'm going to pretty much guarantee you are going to see me lose. This is a very hard game. Now, I'm going to be playing what is arguably the easier of the solo modes that are out there, or solo or co-op modes. As you can see, I'm going to be playing this two-handed with two different characters there. And that is the one against meteorites and marauders. We're going to have these two little marauders going to be running around and smashing things. And anytime they move into a location, they'll smash it, i.e. damage it. And if I'm there, I'll have to give them one of my cards here. And if I ever can't give them one of my cards, then I will straight up lose. Now, the two characters that I'm playing are I'm playing Chad, who is a quartermaster. And the quartermaster ability he has is, as an action, he can always use the cargo bay unless the cargo bay is totally depowered. And I also have... Blurp Johnson, our ship designer, and his ability is three times per game I can use a hidden access panel which lets him use the ability of an adjacent room once per game as an action, or sorry, three times per game I can use it as an action. Now, something else that I'm doing is a bit of a homebrew rule, and that is I've come up with once per game powers for each of the different characters and i'm still working them out and i will wind up put a and i'll put a link to a google doc with what i currently have says are once per game powers and that's simply because well i love the art so much and the minis are so fun i thought that each of them should have something about them that's unique that's not particularly overpowered because you can use it once per game and so since it's my channel i'm going to use it so for Chad, and you'll see me kind of get rid of this big old red token, but for Chad, I've decided he looks like he's really athletic and he's buff and he's tough and he knows what's going on. And so for him, if he's ever in a room that gets totally evacuated of oxygen, once per game, he can just leap out of the way without any penalty. While Blorp, because he is a blob, once per game, he can squeeze himself through the vents and whoop, move diagonally once per game. So, as I said, I'll have down in the description a link to a doc that has the various powers that I've come up with for all of them. And you're welcome to use them, welcome to make suggestions on your own, and so on and so on. Now, so before I get started, I have just the fuses set on A and B. I have to get both of them into the escape pods and off the ship before I have wound up losing. And here, these are just all the ones that you can just grab. I just have them all stacked up, so it's a little bit easier to see. Actually, I'll move that right up here. Here are my pip cards. There's my discard. And I got very lucky with my opening draw for Blorp. So I already have a power pack for him and to hack the bridges. So basically, I just need to find out what these things are and I'll be able to hack the bridge and move those wherever I need to. Then Chad has a requisition form. He starts with an oxygen tank and an override. And I'm going to have Blorp go first. But the first thing I have to do is go ahead and roll for my damage and roll for where the Marauders are starting. So first we have two right here. Doink. Then we have a three. Doink. And our big marauder. Actually, I'm just going to set this back down and roll it right in here. There we go. It's going to come in on eight. Oh, I don't like that. Don't like that at all. And then our little Marauder. Jesus. 
Ah, oh, Jesus, and three. So my stuff just took a mega huge beating right there. And they're all very close to me. So that I don't like. And the bad news is that means on the first turn, he's going to come after. Yeah, he's going to move right over here to the crew quarters and hit somebody. Oh, I should also say that if the room that the Marauder's in ever gets evacuated of oxygen, then they get ejected into space and they don't come back until we get to the red. And so it is possible to trick them into blowing up the rooms that they're coming through if you're lucky, because they're always going to move towards the closest of the characters there and try to try to bust them up. Now, playing easy mode, I'm going to pick which one of the two is going to move each time. In a harder mode, they would both be moving every turn. Not that it matters, because I'm definitely going to lose here. But, so we're going to start with Blorp, and start the turn. We hit nine. Okay, so no matter what happens, I'm going to lose some stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, one, activate the teleporter for two to here, and then three, I'm going to grab Blorp a food ration. And that's going to be that. So I don't have a choice. It has to be this one. Doink. And... Ah! Instead, I'm going to let him stay right here. And I'm going to play the override card, because that will stop the Marauder movement. And now, it is Chad's turn. Five. I wish I could have hit something else. All right, Chad. Let's be intelligent here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go hmm, I think I'm just going to have to take a hit. Yeah, I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going to get myself a power pack. And I just know that this guy's going to be coming after me because, again, I'm very close. I mean, I think I could probably choose just to move this one here, but that just seems maybe too easy. So maybe? I don't know. Well, I get to pick, and I do always lose. Nope, nope, I'm, I'm going to go cheesy mode here, because this way maybe I'll get through the whole game. I'm going to activate this guy right here. Move there, and he damages that. Then we are back to Blorp. Seven. Hits right here. Okay, so I'm going to go to... Operations, I'm going to go one, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to use my ability to go bloop, go diagonally over to here for one. Then I'm going to use the room to draw three pip cards and keep one. Okay. Ooh, so that's tough. I got plenty of hack the bridges. There's a spacesuit and a quick thinking that are both really, really good. But I think I'm going to take the spacesuit. Because that's just so freaking good to have those. So spacesuit it is. And that was two. And then for three, I'm going to move myself over here. All right. Now we have to move. I'm going to, I'm going to leave him there just in case an asteroid will hit that because that would be great of course then chad will be stuck i don't like that so i guess i hope that doesn't happen but so move him 
So he's two away, he always moves towards the higher number to get closer, so he comes here and goes smashy smashy. All right, back to Chad. We hit eight. Which damage is that? Oh, this is bad. I need to fix stuff because we're going to get the cascading everywhere. I'm about to lose that. Oh, not good. All right, so I'm going to go one. Then two. I'm going to fix this. And three. Use the maintenance that I've now repaired right here. Now that does mean that I'm going to have to discard something because he's going to activate. And I think that's okay. So I will let him go smashy smashy. And I will discard, give him my requisition form right there. All right. And then back to Borp. So a perfect world, in a perfect world, I'm going to roll a three right now. Three or a two, a five. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to peek here. So that is C. And Hmm. Unfortunately, Blorp does not have... Oh no, Blorp does have a spacesuit. So then for three, let's go ahead and get Blorp a life... Oh, I can't. I have to fix that. So let's go ahead and just draw from the deck here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I can use one of the other rooms. I could use the teleporter if I wanted. That could be good. But nope, I'm just going to get a pip card. Requisition form. All right, not bad. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six. Blorp's got six cards, so I'm okay. And now I'm going to let him come here. He's going to... Oh, I don't see. Is it... Mm. Yep, I'm going to let him come here. He's going to step into the room. He's going to destroy this. Which means we're in the vacuum of space. And assuming I have read the rules correctly, and I'm going to stop and double check those right now. And no, I think I'm reading it wrong. It says they get ejected into space if the damage is done via damage roll or cascade. So they get to stay there just like I do. So that didn't work great for me because now I'm immediately going to lose my requisition form. But that's okay. Well, it's not great. So with luck, I'll roll a two now. All right, so we're back to Chad. Five. Oh, so whoo, goes right through there. So first thing Chad's going to do is he's going to repair here for one. He's going to... Go here. Oh, I don't have to go there. Then I'm going to use his ability and just use the cargo bay and collect an override card for action number two. Then for action number three, I'm actually going to move. 
to the cargo bay. So I guess I didn't have to do it that way, but that's okay. Then I'm going to use the override card to stop him from moving, like so. Unfortunately, Blorp does not have what I want. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one repair. Oh, this is gone because that's gone. Oh, no. Sugar. All right. So anyhow, I'm still going to do a single repair. One. Then I'm going to move two. I'm going to activate this three and get myself up there, give myself a little time, a little space. Then I'm going to activate this guy, let him come here and go smashy smashy. And now let's hope that I roll a three. Oh, oh, <laughs> sucker. So boom, that happens. Get out of here, Marauder Peter. I've named him Peter. And then we take damage there, damage there, damage there, and damage there. So that was really bad as far as the cascading damage goes, but I just opened this game up, so I now feel like I actually have a chance to win here because of that. All right. And sorry about the little change in lighting there. I'd forgotten and left an overhead light on up here, which kind of gave a little bit of a, a glare in some places. So sorry about that. But now we're back to Chad. Now I can't, I don't want to let this cargo bay get destroyed. So I'm going to go one to repair there. Two, we have E. And then three, I'm going to move to the laboratory. And he comes here, does some damage. Now in a perfect world, I'm going to roll a 12. I did not. I rolled a five. So whoo, flies through there. Now Blorp is going to start out. He's going to check this out. So there's our A. So that is one of the good ones we need to keep. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, then I'm going to get Blorp, a navigation code. So that means Blorp just needs to get the oxygen. He has one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got six cards. So that was two actions, and then I think... For his third action, hmm. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of his hidden access panels to use the sensors. Oh, no, because I don't want to get hit. I'm not going to do that because I don't have an override. And then I will just go doink and move myself there. And this guy shows up. 
Oh, I should have fixed that more. Oh. Don't roll an eight. Don't roll an eight. Don't roll an eight. Oh, nine. Okay, I need to start fixing some stuff here. So I think, unfortunately, I need to go one, two, and then for my three, use the cargo bay and get the override back. Then I'm going to play the override right now to stop him from moving. We're back to blorp. Seven. Oh, oh, good. That gets destroyed. I mean, not good. It was destroyed, but I already have what I need to protect to, to get off the ship from the engine room. And then Blorp is going to go one, two, three. Can't stop the Marauder this time. So here he comes. And we roll it. Six. Hits the greenhouse. Oops. Okay. So I think... So I need oxygen. Alright, so he's going to come here. Go one. Two. And then use the maintenance. Three to fix life support. And then he comes this way, he smashes up my cargo bay a little bit. Seven. If you didn't know that, that's, a, that's the sound that a meteor would make if there was sound in space as it goes through a room with no oxygen. Little known facts. Back to Blorp. So Blorp is going to go one, two, fix that, and then for three, activate the teleporter with its hidden access panel control and bring him there. Oh, it says move one alley to the teleporter, so there. All right, and here he comes. Smashy, smashy. And come on, three. A three would be a good roll here. Nine. Oh, not good roll. So boom, that gets destroyed, which means that gets destroyed. Now the good news is, this gets destroyed. Which sends him out into space. We'll name him Don. But of course, that gets hit, and that gets hit. So now, if I get back into the red on the board here, then they're going to come back. All right, so that was Blorp. Now we have Chad. So Chad, well, we need to do some fixing first. So we're going to go one, two, three. Let's fix that up. Totally, completely. Then we're on to Blorp. We have a six. Oh, gosh, that's way far away. I got to fix that too. All right, but what we're going to do here is first Blorp is going to do use his ability again for the teleporter and go teleport. And then, second action, repair. Third action, oh shoot, I meant to, before I leave, I'm going to do a trade and give this to Chad. I meant to do that before I left. All right. Here we go. I think if I don't get another huge cascade here, I should be able to pull this off. Six. Woo! I'm glad I fixed that. 
That hits there. Back to Chad. So Chad... Oh boy, I just messed this whole thing up all over the place. But that's okay. Chad's going to grab another oxygen. Which eventually he's going to give to Blorp. That's one. Then two. Going to come here. And... We're going to take a look at this, see what this one is. D. So that is three. And now I can use Blorp's Hack the Bridge to fix that. But let's see what gets hit first. Seven. Whoa. So first thing, we're going to do one for Blorp, repair. Two for Blorp, get this. Then three for Blorp, hack the bridge, and we're going to make it A and D are the two good ones. All right, so we're getting there. Come on, not Nate, not Nate, not Nate. Six. Good Lord. <laughs> Things is getting hammered. Okay. Now, Chad is going to use the teleporter for one to come to here. Two, repair this. And then three, repair again, trying to protect from the cascading damage here. And then we have a nine. And back to Blorp. Now... Let's go ahead. So what does Blorp need? Blorp needs the oxygen tank. And Chad needs nav codes. Okay. So we're going to go one, two, and here I'm going to do a trade and give and take oxygen tank from Chad and Blorp has six cards so Blorp's okay all right so oh I think I think I'm gonna do this <gasps> eight. Oh wow I'm glad I fixed that up <laughs> all right we're back to Chad now Chad is going to go... Oh wait, no, Chad first is going to get nav codes. Which means he now has everything that he needs. He's going to go two. No, we're going to go two. And three. Now I'm going to go there because even if 12 gets hit or, well, if 12, 6, or 2, <laughs> any of these three get hit, it's going to cause explosive decompression, which is going to kill this, this, and this, and this. But if you recall, that is Chad's once per game ability that I gave him. So he'll be able to get out of the way. I have this image of, like his tongue shooting out and like grabbing onto the wall and pulling or grabbing onto like the door handle, like pulling him away. A whoop. You know, so he can hold on to all his stuff. I can justify anything, really. But, so that's him there. And six. Whoa, it happened. So boom. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. That gets destroyed. Six. Seven and eight. Chad will use his once per game. Whoop. Oh, man. Now, the bad news is these guys come back.
And here they go. I think they will actually do damage to a place if they roll that. I'm not totally sure, but I think they'll still do damage. So the big guy's coming in on 12, but there's nothing there to actually damage. And the little guy is coming in on 4. Oh boy. Oh my gosh. I'm so close. I'm so close to losing here. All right, so it's Blorp's turn. Okay. So I think what I need to do for Blorp is we're going to do a double repair. One, two, three. So all I have to do is survive and Chad will be able to get off the ship. And then I will activate him here. Boop. He'll do his damage. And then we roll before Chad's turn. A two. And then just to, you know, help out a little bit, we're going to go one, do a repair, two, and then three, escape, A and D. Boom! I did it! Yes! Now, I just want to point out that I'm playing on easy mode here, and that was close. Really, really close. But really, I'm enjoying this game. This game is can get very, very challenging. I played first with the robots, and the robots... If you have this game, oh my gosh, they are so, so hard. But there you have it, folks. That is solo play, mission catastrophe. As you can see, I was two-handing it, two-handing it as it were. Check the description for a link to see the once-per-game player powers I've come up with for each of the characters. And you can also learn more about the game down in the description as well. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.